the book of Ezekiel, and chapter 43. Thank you, Lord. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 43. And if you have a Bible which it titles, if you have a Thompson Bible which will be written on the top of it, the glory of God returns to the temple. I'm not going to read all that, but I'm just going to read verse 10. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel. Show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. <laughs> and let them measure, and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, Show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the coming in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinance thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them. This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain. The whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Now we know that as the Spirit of God has ministered to us, this is the day of inflation. This is the day of famine. We read in the, in the prophets of old that there is a famine in the land. Not a famine for bread and water, but a famine for hearing the word of the Lord. And we need to realize, you know, when we say about famine, in one way, we see that there is so much of the word of God going on. When we look at the present century, we see that we have more denominations, more churches than any other century has ever seen. Do you agree with me? Yes. If, if you have been an observer of the things that are happening, and if you have seen the history of the church, we can see there has been no century such as this century. In terms of activities, in terms of efforts, in terms of endeavor that man has offered unto God. But in the midst of all these things, we see that there is an inflation. We see that there is a famine. We see that things are not in the way that God has desired. We see that very clearly. We, when we look around, we see that. All right, now let us come back to ourselves. Now we know that the Lord has given us a vision. The Lord has spoken to us about His church. But let us again see what we have produced in these years. It's good for us to examine of what has come forth in these years in our own life.
And I think that's something that the Lord wants us to do. We need to realize, we need to take a stock of what is exactly happening in our lives and in the ministry that God has called us. It is true when we look around, look out to the world, there's a famine. People do not have the word. But to us who have heard the word of the Lord, God also wants us to check our lives and see how much of that has produced unto God. And I think that there are words of prophecies this morning concerning this. The Lord really wants us to check ourselves and see how much of that we have seen has become a part of our life in these days. And so we see that it is not as we have heard yesterday, it is not all that talky-talky, but it got to be walky-walky. It's not all that we talk about it, but we need to move in that direction and begin to produce in that direction in our lives as individuals and as a people. And I have no doubt that we will produce it when we will allow Him to produce it in us in these days. See, the Lord is really wanting us to realize that apart from Him, this life cannot be produced and formed in us. You know, as we have seen yesterday, you know, all our own way of thinking and struggling cannot produce it. God has said that He will do it. And we need to give ourselves to Him who is able to produce in us in these days. Now I'm sure that as we turn to the book of Ezekiel, there are few things that God wants to minister to us in this direction. We see that several times we have talked about the kingdom of God. We have talked about the body of Christ. We have talked about the glorious church. But somehow we have not seen the demonstration of that life. In a measure we thought it should be there in us. As we turn to uh, Ezekiel chapter 43. Verse 10, he says, Thou son of man, shew the house to the house of Israel. Now we see that the Lord wants to bring forth something in us. We'll come to that later. But we see the emphasis of the Lord is that we need to submit to what God is saying in this hour. What God is looking for in us is a total submission and a surrender to what the Lord wants to perform in us. A total submission. You know, when we turn to Acts chapter 1, we all know that portion. Someone please read Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. Plan to do and teach. All that Jesus began to do and teach. So we see that even in the life of Jesus, He began to do and then He began to teach. So one thing the Lord wants to do in these days is, God wants to birth something in us in these days. God wants to perform something 
fresh in us in these days, that as that thing will begin to work in us, it will also flow out to others around us. So the first thing is that God wants to perform something in our own lives, in your life and mine. God may form something, that He may birth something in our spirit in these days. It is not that we come for another leaders meeting, and we hear a message, and we appreciate it, and we go back. But I believe that God wants to meet with us and God wants to put something in you and in me. He wants to create something new in you and in me. Now sometimes you may ask me, how is it possible to create in two days? God can do that. God can do that. Don't try to bring God down to our low level of thinking and doing. We need to realize that God can perform it in these two days. You ask the man called the Apostle Paul. He did it in a fraction of a second. As he was walking, as he was going on to, to Damascus, we see that he met with this God, this Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that that very day, God performed something in that man's life that even if we want to run away, he was not able to run away. God is able to perform a thing in you. God is able to perform a thing in me. And I think that over the years, we have heard many things maybe. And in the spiritual backgrounds that we have grown, we have been told many things. But I believe that God is going to touch us in a fresh and in a new way. And God wants to deposit in you and in me something that would be something that which is born of God and created of God. That after these things, that even if you desire to go your way, you will see that you are tied and bound by God. That's what I'm trying to say to you. The ministry of the Son was so different. You know, sometimes some people would ask, was it possible for Jesus to say, no to the Father's will? Now in the human way, we can say many answers to that. But I can say one to you, that His relationship with the Father and the binding with which he has been bound with the Father would make him to say yes at all times in his life. And I have no human answer to it, but I would like to say that God wants to create in us that very mind that which was in Christ, which will bind us to the Father's will, like the Apostle Paul, who will call and say, Father, I want to do your will. You will send me to Jerusalem. I am willing to go there and even to be bound and even to die there. Hallelujah. Oh, beloved, this ministry is different. This ministry is different. And therefore, let us lay open before God's presence. I feel the presence of Him this morning. I feel the warmth of His expressions this morning. And I want to say that if we will allow God to perform... He is ready to perform this life in us. Hallelujah. So beloved, let Him create within us something today. Let Him engrave something upon our hearts in these days. There is some word of prophecy, the word of prophecy that came, that He has written His name upon your heart. And I believe God wants to write it upon your heart in these days. But let us be open to God. Let us be open to God. You know, as we have heard... And as we also know, but let it be beyond just mere acceptance in our intellect that we are living in the day of God's atonement. The day of atonement. The day of God's working upon God's life, people's lives. God wants to work. It is more than an intellectual apprehension. It is more than an intellectual understanding 
of the Day of Atonement. Rather, God wants us to realize that we are putting our feet on those grounds even in these days. God wants to perform it in us. So, let God create in us this hunger. Let God create in us this life. He wants to bring forth this in our hearts in these days. You know, we know as the Bible says, these are the days where the hearts of men will fail for fear. And it's our prayer and it's God's desire that there will be people who will stand up in the midst of such a fear that is gripping the whole earth in this hour. When we look at the Bible, we can see men like Daniel who stood in the midst of such a situation. And you know what the Bible says about Daniel? Daniel was a man with an excellent spirit within him. Isn't it? Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit within. And I believe in these hour, in this time, when the hearts of men are failing for fear, that God will raise up God's ministries and God's people who would have an excellent spirit. And know one thing about Daniel, when you just think about Daniel, we see that he is a man, and he was a man who was the dissolver of doubts. You know, in the palace of the king, when there was a doubt, when there was a confusion, when things were not clear, they always said, let us go to Daniel, for we know that he has an excellent spirit in him. Praise God. God's excellent ministry is going to be a people who have an excellent spirit within them. Even the spirit of the Son, who has an excellent ministry in the heavenlies, in the throne room of God. Hallelujah. God wants to deposit this in us in these days. God wants to create this in us in these days. That we may go out of this place in these days, being touched by God and created by God in us, something new of or a new dimension of His life in these days. Yeah, let us turn again to... Uh, we will come back to Ezekiel. We'll let us go to another few other few scriptures. I feel led to go there. Let's go to Isaiah. We'll come back later on. To this scripture. It's God's desire that we would come out. We will be brought out in the very form and shape of what He is desiring for. Do you believe that? Yeah, it is not only that He wants to speak about us, but He wants to see us coming forth in that very form and in that nature. Isaiah chapter 43. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We all know the scripture portion. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1, we have shared a message on this. But there is something the Lord wants to minister again. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I call thee by thy name. Thou art mine. We see that the Lord says that, But now thus say the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. We see that Jacob was created by God. But he says about Israel that Israel was formed. Now we know the names of and the meanings of these names here. Jacob means supplanter, deceiver. But we see that he was formed into Israel. Can you identify with Jacob? We know that we are true deceivers. Who is a deceiver? Tell me who is a deceiver. Deceiver is one who tells one thing and he does another thing. 
Yes, no? Are in, are, are, aren't you sure in your own heart that you have done this before God? Oh, in every meeting we said, Lord, I will be this. Lord, I will do this. Lord, after this camp meetings, I am going to be different. After this leaders meeting, my ministry is going to be different. We are Jacobs. Can you say that? We are Jacobs. We are being deceivers. We have told the Lord, Lord, give me this and I will do that. God gave that, but He never did that. Isn't it real? Lord, if you will provide me this, then I would have more time, more time to spend with you. God gave you that, you never bothered about it. Isn't it real? Isn't it right with us? <coughs> Jacob is a deceiver. And we have not been, not very different from him. But the love of God is seen there. That God knows Jacob. Praise God. God knows the Jacob from Hyderabad. God knows all the Jacobs seated here. Praise God. He knows all of us very well. The thing with my God, our God is, He knows the, the creation of Jacob. Praise God. There's someone who prayed prophetically. He said that God, you know that how I have been made. Praise God. And I think God wants us to be true to such statements that we make before God. He knows what we are made of. He knows and so we know that in that encounter we don't want to go there. That's not our main part of the message but you know God asked him what is your name? And he said my name is Jacob.
Thank you.